Hi, this is the Chemistry for Biology channel. I'm John Irwin, and we're talking about Zinc-15. Uh, this work is brought to you uh, from the University of California, San Francisco, Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, the Irwin Lab and the Scheuchert Lab, and it's supported by the National Institutes of Health. Today's episode is Introducing Zinc-15. This is really the first video in a series, uh, and it's going to be short and sweet, just to the point. So we're going to talk about zinc from the perspective of what zinc can do for you. So what interests you? Well, one thing that might interest you is a, co a compound. You might have a compound that is interesting, like a natural product or a drug, and you might want to know more about it and what compounds you can buy around it, analogs, for instance. Uh, you might have a target you're interested in, uh, a gene. Uh, and then you might want to know what compounds bind to that gene or what compounds you can buy for that gene. Uh, you might also be interested in a screening library like the lead-like or fragment-like subsets or drug-like. These are the original, really the purpose of zinc, uh, and so we still provide those, of course. And finally, you might be interested in something else. You might be interested in rings, which many medicinal chemists are. You might be interested in uh, particular warheads like... Uh, hydroxamic acids or covalent uh, uh, moieties, um, uh, nucleophiles and electrophiles. You might be interested in clinical trials. Zinc can answer or can help you answer all kinds of questions. And this series of videos will, will attempt to do just that, to show you how to use zinc as a tool. Let's start with a little bit of background about zinc. What is zinc? Well, zinc contains annotated compounds, such as those found in the medicinal chemistry literature and represented in the Kemble database, and or, or drug bank, or HMDB, traditional medicine databases, and it intersects them with commercially available compounds, which we get from commercial suppliers. There are now over 230 vendors in zinc, representing more than 100 million molecules that you can simply purchase. So zinc integrates data from these different sources like Kemble, vendor catalogs, clinical trials, annotated catalogs, computed properties, and uh, other data like, for example, anatomical and therapeutic classifications from the WHO. It integrates it into a relational database and makes it available to you via an easy-to-use interface, either web pages, an API, uh, and it, you can get it in different forms, for example, in Excel format, JSON, XML, TXT, and so on. And it, and it makes tools that are easy to interrogate this data with. We've just published a paper uh, called Zinc-15, Ligand Discovery for Everyone, and it's available at the Journal of Computer Information and Modeling. And uh, it's free to, to download. It's an editor's choice paper, and so we refer you to that paper. Um, so this is the time for a demo, so we're going to switch over to a demo, and we're going to switch to zinc15.docking.org. The welcome screen is a splash screen that gives you chances to look at the publications, find out recent news. Uh, some examples are given here uh, of kinds of questions you can ask with Zinc. It's also got some helpful links for getting started, which point to our wiki where we've attempted to write some documentation. The great thing about wikis, you can contribute. We welcome that contribution. So, uh, the, but the main navigational tool is this navigation bar at the top in black, and these represent resources, so substances is a resource, catalogs, and there are other resources hidden behind these buttons. And so, the purpose of this video is a very brief introduction. There will be separate videos about each resource. In fact, multiple videos about each resource uh, as we attempt to explain all of them. But if you go into substances, for example, and uh, you can now, there are buttons that allow you to get help, examples, simply browse substances, see subsets of molecules, or search for them. This is one of the most common things people want to do is simply type in a molecule's name, like dopamine, and they get the molecule, and then they want to search for it. So you can either do an exact substructure, or you can use some sort of similarity metric. And when you do this, it takes you to the molecule, <clears throat> molecule detail page, which allows you to look at it. And this is going to look familiar to you if you were used to 
Zinc, 15, uh, Zinc 12. It's going to look quite similar, but there's a few additional features. And so uh, really for today, I don't want to get into too much more. Um, uh, we're going to have more videos. I want to keep each one of them short so you can just focus on it. Um, so I'm going to take you back and say, uh, was that helpful? Uh, do you now know a little bit more about zinc? Uh, if you like this video and if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow us on Facebook or Twitter where we broadcast mostly updates uh, when we fix things or when, when there's a new version. And gives me one last chance to remind you that this was brought to you from, by the National Institutes of Health. And thank you for listening and see you next time.